Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Wednesday. There is a lot to get into, and I have my homegirl, Emily, here with me on Tea Time Unfiltered. Say what's up to the people, Emily. Hey, everybody. All right. So, like I always tell you guys, the full episode, to see all of the video footage that will be included in this podcast, go to Spotify. All you have to do is download the app. It is free, and you are able to watch the full video on the Spotify app. Some of this will be posted on YouTube, but the full thing will be on the Spotify app. So anyways, we got to talk about this whole Jeffree Star drama. Um, Emily, it is a mess. The yeah. girls are fighting. The they thems are fighting. <laughs> People are feeling away. And um, so let me get started by initially playing the clip of Jeffree Star and what caused him to once again go viral. So I'm going to go ahead and play this right now. I'm not into all the other bullshit, I think. What other bullshit? The they and them. Yeah. And all that extra shit that we added during the pandemic because everyone mm. was so bored on their fucking houses. They just started to make up more shit and more, more shit. More stuff, more stuff. Yeah. That's where the like, conservatives like me because I'm just real. Yeah, you There's do no, have a conservative you're vibe to you. You're not they and them. You're trans, you're male or you're female. And you're standing and on that. so mad when I say that. How are you a they? What the fuck does that mean? It's stupid is what it is. Yeah. But you need someone like me that looks like me to say it. Because if you say it, it turns into you're homophobic. You hate trans people. You hate gays. And it's just how you feel. You don't hate anyone. You just think it's stupid. All right. So you just heard mm. that clip. So Emily, what did you think when you first saw this going viral? Well, I will say, um, I do think Jeffrey is trying to have a moment. And I think he knows what is is a hot, buck, uh, hot button topic that's very controversial. Uh, controversial. I struggle saying that word for some reason. Controversial. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah. So uh, that is a very uh, touchy topic. So um, I, I kind of see the angle he's going. Uh, I definitely think he's trying to appeal to certain people. Uh, but with that being said, honestly, I, I do think a lot of people are confused about it. It is a very um, interesting topic. And I it's confusing. A lot of people don't get it. They don't understand it. And a lot of people do think what he said is, is right. A lot of people agree with them. So I'm not going to totally just hate on him because that that's a pretty common thing. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? That that seems odd to a lot of people. No, I definitely agree. And I agree with Jeffree Star in this instance. Do I agree with everything that Jeffree Star stands for and what he says? No. But in this instance, I believe he's absolutely right. Now, I will say this. I do feel like Jeffree Star is once again looking for controversy. Even the guy that he's doing the podcast with, if you guys do not know, his name is Taylor Lewan. And basically he played for the Tennessee Titans. And so he's been the one that he's been kind of hinting at, like I'm talking to a guy in the NFL and me, my right. NFL boo. So he's been kind of drumming all this up. And then we see this guy, but Taylor is technically married and he's a father of two. So he's not Jeffrey Star's quote unquote boo, but Jeffrey Star is allegedly smashing one of his friends who's in the NFL. So they did all of this to me as a rollout for this new podcast that him and Jeffree Star are starring in. Oh, <laughs> no yeah, <pun> absolutely. <laughs> but yeah. with the topic of that, I definitely agree. And what's very interesting with this whole they, them, because I've said the same thing on Instagram and I've been attacked. I've been called transphobic and whatever phobic they want to call you. Um, because I'm like, I'm not calling a singular person they. When Sam Smith was trying to push that nonsense, I was like, no, he's Sam Smith. Moving on. To me, when you call somebody they, them, it sounds like demonic possession. I don't care. It sounds like you have multiple personality disorder. Um, I'm not going to call a singular person they. It doesn't feel comfortable for me to use those words. And why should my comfort be set aside to uplift your comfort? If you feel like that's what makes you comfortable, that's fine. It doesn't make me comfortable. So I should put my comfort aside for your comfort. I think not. I'm going to put myself first in this situation. Even when I've had conversations with people who try to be politically correct and use the they, them pronouns, what I've noticed is, one, the conversation does not flow because they're so busy thinking 
Like yes. I need to call this person a they. They're literally stopping as they're talking, trying to make themselves and force themselves to talk a certain way. By the time I got done with this conversation with this person who was using they, them pronouns, it literally sounded like we were talking about a band as opposed to the singer Sam Smith. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, Because, you know, usually I, I, whatever someone identifies, usually I try to be very respectful or whatever, but I I get confused. You're trying to have a conversation. You want to be respectful. You don't want to offend anybody or anything like that. But it it does sound awkward. And a lot of times when I try to be politically correct, I get confused. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to say. Like, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm not trying to offend anybody. But like, and I'm not the most grammatically correct person to begin with anyways. But a lot of times I'm like, I, I'm not referring to, you know, multiple people. It's just one person. So how do I refer to this person in a past tense and it, it just doesn't make sense. I, I start stuttering and I don't, you know, it's hard. It's hard to carry on a conversation. It makes things difficult and unnecessary. No, it, it really does. And I really feel, I agree with him that it comes off as if people are just seeking attention. You know, it's like, you yeah. can't get attention anymore for being gay. Like, okay. You know, everybody knows a gay person. So it's like, there's no more quote unquote attention to be had for coming out the closet. Nobody cares. That's your business. And then we have the whole, oh, well, I'm trans, I'm transitioning, watch me transition. And so now that's been oversaturated. So now what's the next best thing? I'm they, them, I'm non-binary. It's like, you know, let's constantly try to up the ante to show how different I am from everybody else. And, you know, at this point, there's even where they will take off the TH. So it's not even they, them, it's them, them with a V. So instead yeah, of they, I saw that. You, you know, them, and then there's zig and zag. Like at this point, y'all are just trying to be funny. I feel like they're trolling at this point. Oh, thank you so much for asking about my pronouns. Everyone misgenders me on my comments, and it means so much that you asked, and you're trying to be respectful, so I love you for that. So I use the pronoun Zezer. Um, I chose these pronouns because in my head, they, them, as a non-binary person, means like, like no gender, but Zezer for me feels like it's um, like sliding, like Z and Zer, very similar to he and him and she and her, and I just preferred that. Um, so obviously Z can be used um, in replace of she, him, and they, and then Zer is used in replace of um, the other ones. So I've been getting this question more and more about my pronouns. Basically, you just use them as they, but instead of the TH, it's a V. So they, them, their, themself. Or if that's still a little bit confusing, here's like the example of every form of it in a sentence. I see this like sentence example thing a lot for most pronouns. So hopefully that's not too confusing. So lots of people asking about my pronouns. They are pronounced Z, Zem, Ze. So Z rhymes with he, them rhymes with them, and Z rhymes with their. Uh, and using them in a sentence, it would be Z is over there, Z is wearing their hat, I like them. I hope that helped. Hello, my friends. Thank you so much for asking this question. And here's how to use Z Zier pronouns in a sentence. Z is such a great person. Your smile is so contagious. In fact, I saw Zier make a whole audience smile. I think Zier should be very proud of Zier self. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for 20,000 followers. That's crazy. Like, what? And thank you so much for watching and always watching. And I love you all so much. Like, what yeah, they I do with too. Zig -zag, a, a them? Like, what is this? Like, you guys are just butchering the English language. And I'm yes. over it. Right. It's like people, sometimes I really, like you said, I feel like a joke. Like, let's just make a bunch of shit up and see how, you know, these people so worried about being politically correct, how far they'll go. Like, how far can I push it and how dumb can I make them look? But then you watch TikToks and shit and these people are dead ass serious. And I'm like, I'm That's not saying That's the disturbing that. part. Yes. And have the nerve to get offended or make you feel like you're a piece of shit and a horrible human being because you can't wrap your mind around someone not identifying with the gender like I totally get trans I totally get you know sexuality gay stuff like that I don't understand not identifying 
with the gym. And I, you know, this is maybe not the perfect example, but when you think of like just animals in the world and stuff, now there are animals that can change their gender and things like that. But uh, I, I want to say most animals, unless there's something I'm forgetting, usually have a gender. So it's kind of hard to just relate and understand and think about it. And I get, you know, some people's argument as well. It, it's not for you to understand. But if I'm having a conversation and I want to properly, you know, call someone the right name without offending them, I need to fucking understand it. And I can't. Right. You know, like I said, once people on TikTok started calling themselves Ziggs and saying, you know, uh, Zig told me and Zig thyself, I, I just I checked out. I checked out and I'm not entertaining it. I, I think we are now entering a new age of where people are so woke their sleep and people are over it. You know, yeah. people don't care anymore. Um, when you have somebody like Jeffree Star, who is clearly, you know, he's gay, he's bi, he's male, he's female, you know, he's like a little bit of everything. And he's talking with common sense and logic and people who are very conservative are agreeing with Jeffree Star. It says a lot. You know, he's gotten more support from this than anything he's done in a long time. And I agree with it. I don't think it's non-binary phobic. I don't even know if that's a word. Yeah. Um, it's just at this point, people are no longer um, entertaining this nonsense because even in the school system here in Minnesota, they're saying that teachers are now, they have no choice. They have to identify kids. They have to speak to kids how the children identify, regardless of the parents. So there's been issues where some of my teacher friends, um, let's say it's a girl in the classroom, and she's telling the teacher she wants to be called John. You know, she identifies as a boy, and she wants to be called John. So the teachers are identifying her and calling her John. And so when they call the household to talk to the parent about, you know, John was acting up in class. So one of my friends, they caught the household to talk to the, to the mom. And they're like, yeah, John didn't have a really good day. And, you know, John was kind of upset. And the mom was like, who the fuck is John? Right. My That's daughter's how I name been. is Tatiana. Okay. I don't, who, who is John? Why are you calling <laughs> yeah. my child John? You got the wrong and house. And she was like, well, that's how your child identifies. And the, and the mother went off because she had no idea that her child was low-key identifying as something different in school. And the mother was like, no, she's looking for fucking attention because in this house, she's called Tatiana. Nobody's ever called her John. Where did this come from? You know, so you have a lot of children who are unfortunately jumping on the bandwagon of TikTok and they're trying to do something to stand out. Am I saying everyone? No, I'm sure there's some people who are truly, they see themselves as non-binary and that's their business. But you do have a lot of people who are jumping on bandwagons and they're doing it because they think it's cool, it's chic, it's a way to get attention. And so now they're putting laws in place where regardless if you consent as a parent, that teacher has to address your child as whatever pronoun they choose, whatever name they choose. I think it's insane. Yeah, it's it is. It's um ridiculous. And you know, like I was going to say something but then starting out with, you know, of course we always want to support our kids and you know, and situate but I feel like at this point that should just go without saying. Why whenever there's stupid shit going on or just stuff that and I don't know, maybe I'm getting too old. I don't know. But you always have to start out with kind of saying you have to state the obvious, like mm -hmm. you can support your kid and have their back and love them and things like that without always subscribing to things that it, it just is bizarre. Like the world we live in is just bizarre and it's, it's strange and it's stranger than fiction. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely to that point now where it's just insane. And he got a lot of backlash for this. They accuse him of being transphobic and not supporting non-binary people. And you know what I always find interesting about this topic, because, you know, like I said, I've been attacked about this topic, you know, for years. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't, that's why I say, I don't even talk about this topic anymore. I could care less. Honestly, that's what this topic has turned to for a lot of people. Um, because you can't have an opinion. And if you do, you're attacked relentlessly. So at this point, most people, they don't care anymore. They don't care what happens. Like that's on you. We don't care. We've checked out. That's your business. You know, and that's kind of how I feel. I've, I've washed my hands of it because I've seen some of the same people in this community have absolutely no problem attacking biological women, disrespecting biological women, 
I've been attacked by people in the community, you know what I'm saying, for simply having my opinion, just like they have an opinion, but they can always go below the belt. But if I go below the belt and talk about them transitioning and how they still look like a man and this and that, if I get low in the gutter, I'm transphobic, I'm canceled, but they can say all types of wild shit. Now, yeah. even on, on TikTok, you, you, they're calling women birthing people, bleeders, you know, chest oh, feeding. God. I mean, it's insane. And you have women saying, stop saying this. Why are you trying to erase us as biological women? You're acting like you're our replacements. Like we don't want to be called cisgender. And I've said that before. Don't call me cis. I'm a woman and I earned my stripes. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I oh boy. White cis women. We need to talk. Take a deep breath. And let's talk. Some of you just now reacted to me saying cis. That defensiveness comes from white supremacy culture. It's okay to be all up in your feelings like that, but it's not okay to use your feelings as an excuse to harm others. We need to pause, allow ourselves to feel our feelings and process through why those were the feelings that we had. Then you can address the underlying thought that caused that feeling. Only when we have thoroughly processed our feelings and the underlying thoughts will we be in a position to respond appropriately with kindness and thoughtfulness. I don't think the negative emotional reaction comes from a place of white supremacy. And I think I'm entitled to make that statement because I am white and I am not a white supremacist, but I still had a negative reaction to your statement. How do I know I'm not a white supremacist? Because I'm not. That's a very conscious decision that requires action and I have neither made that decision or taken those actions. Now, why do women have a negative emotional reaction to being called cis? I can tell you why I did. It's because I'm a woman and adding a prefix to that title, to the thing that I have found a lot of solidarity and pride and purpose inside of um, is demeaning and degrading. I am not a woman, but I am a woman. What makes me a woman is something that I always have been, always will be, and I cannot change. Things are things that I wouldn't want to change even if I could. Maybe when women tell you that their identity is sufficient, you should believe them. Birthing people? No, that's a mother, a woman. How long did we fight for women's rights just for us to be referred to as birthing people? I am not a birther or a birthing person. I'm a woman. Women give birth. Women are mothers. Literally everything that was fought for for women's rights is going straight down the drain. God help the person that ever calls me a birther. In labor. And the things that they are doing are uniquely feminine. I just left, like I'm sitting in the car. I just left a birth where the woman was in labor for four days. She was pushing for over an hour. She nearly lost her mind and was emotionally broken down by the end of this, but she delivered her baby. It was placed on her chest. There were tears in both her and her husband's eyes and the husband leans in close and he whispers, what a woman. It was a beautiful moment. And you know what would have ruined it? What a birthing person. No, we're not about to diminish the battle that women have had to fight to be recognized as badasses and what our bodies are biologically created to do. Don't even get me started on chest feeding. I'm not a birth person. I'm a mother. I'm not chest feeding. I am breastfeeding. Having children is not gender fluid. It is only done by biological females. I am so sick of a female struggle being undermined because everybody else doesn't want to be offended by reality. It is so difficult to carry a child for nine months. It is so difficult to have your world completely turned upside down when a baby passes through your body. It is so hard to deal with the trials and struggles of breastfeeding. You guys do not get to do this. Y'all can call it whatever you want to call it, but I'm tired of being fed this garbage and being told that I have to swallow this garbage. Mothers are warriors. We're not a fetish. We're not a feeling. We're not an option. 
if you want to be offended by this statement, then be offended because reality doesn't cater to feeling. It caters to fact. Well, I got really confused by that. And I did have a conversation with a friend of mine and I'm like, I, I just didn't understand it. I was like, well, why, why are you calling me that? Like, I don't get it. And you know, they explained it to me and that's all, that's cool and well and, and whatever, but it definitely does seem that it has become a versus, you know, like mm -hmm. it's always biological women versus trans women and, it's always like this kind of battle thing as if it's, uh, you know, I guess, cis, I don't know what else to say besides cisgender women that we're always, we're jealous, we're attacking, you know, we're always so mean and hateful and, si and not, you know, giving dues and all kind of stuff like that when, you know, it kind of seems the other way around. Yeah, I mean, I've seen attacks, of course, on both ends, but really, right, fun, yeah, a lot of people in the trans, you know, have been very nasty and mean towards regular women. I'm not calling women cis. I don't know what the hell that means, and I'm not entertaining yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we're just regular. Women. <laughs> I'm just not, you know, and it's it's sad because, like I said, you've seen women on the internet saying, "Don't call us that." I don't like the word cis. And they'll get upset and dig in even deeper, but then let somebody not call them by their preferred pronouns. Let somebody not acknowledge a man who has trained to has transitioned into a woman. Let somebody not acknowledge them as a woman. It's an issue, but yeah, it's, it's not okay the same to energy. It. Yeah, it's not. And that's, that's my issue. It's just the hypocrisy. Even mm -hmm. case in point, I remember I was on Hollywood Unlocked and there was some man, um, he looked like a full man. I mean, he had a beard and everything. And he was upset because he was trying to go into the women's bathroom. And I guess some of the women started freaking out and his own friends were like, dude, like you still look like a man, like, you know, just go in the man's bathroom. And he went on, I don't know if you saw it. He, he went viral and he was really upset. He was crying and he felt like his own friends didn't support him. Was, my name is Kaylee. And then my group of friends, I thought my friends were all starting to yell at me saying I escalated and because she had two kids. I, I didn't even see the kids. They were there and I just lost it. Fight, flight or freeze. And I fought. You don't know what it's like to be a trans person. And then, and then my one friend started yelling at me and neither one of them stood up for them. I, they blamed me that I was the one that was at fault. That, you know, regardless, he thinks he's a woman. He feels like a woman. He's still, you know, trying to, I guess, sort out the physicalities of his face. And so he felt like they should have had his back. And what was so funny was that Tokyo Vanity, is that her name? The one that does makeup for Cardi? Um, styles, Tokyo Styles. Tokyo Styles. I'm, I guess all these Tokyos mixed yeah, up. Yeah, there's a lot of Tokyos. <laughs> there's literally like 10 of them. But yeah, Tokyo yeah. Styles. She jumped in the comment and was laughing. Like she had wrote like a little snarky comment like, mm. And so people started getting on her. Not only biological women, but trans women were getting on her. Like, how dare you? Like, weren't you a man? Like, oh, it's easy for you to judge because you had the money to yeah. aesthetically look like a woman. Because Tokyo looks like a female. I mean, she's gorgeous. Yeah. But yeah. not everybody has that privilege. So right. and I was just reading the comments blown away that, you know, even in their own community, there's hypocrisy. So you're even clowning somebody who identifies as a woman who says they're trans, but because they don't look aesthetically like a woman like you do, you're even looking down on them and writing snarky comments. Yeah. And people were going at her for that. You know, so it's funny that a person in the community can look down at people who don't look like women or who haven't fully transitioned or who aren't able to quote unquote pass. But then when a biological woman says, hey, you look like a man and I'm nervous with you being in here in the bathroom, it's transphobic. When there's even people who do the same thing in the community. So right. I, I found that really interesting that people were lighting her ass up in that comment section. Yeah, I don't know as the they should. Still, yeah, I don't know if the comments are still there, if it was deleted. This was like a few weeks ago. Um, but I thought it was very interesting because I would think being that, you know, they're trying to fight for equal representation, that you would support your trans, you know, sister, even though yeah. your trans sister has a full beard and looks like a grown six foot two man. <laughs> he says he's trans, support him. But she she didn't have that same energy. And yeah, because she really didn't like her up for that. Well, you know, I, I think and this could be a, a wrong analogy, but it seems like in the real world, I would say that most people I feel like are not so worried about everybody else. You know what I mean? Like there's d different communities and things like that. And not saying this for everybody. I think social media makes things so much worse because yeah. everybody has an opinion. The hypocrisy is crazy. Um, and in real life, most people just, okay, you're, 
you're trans or you're non-binary, which I don't, it, back to Jeffree Star, I don't even understand why they're calling him transphobic because I thought trans and non-binary were two totally different things. But that, you know, like I said, shit, I'm old. I, maybe I missed that. But um, anyways, you know, most people seem, well, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of times, maybe I'm just looking at things from my perspective. Whatever someone has going on in their life and things like that, it, it's not a problem. I don't care. I'm not offended by anybody who's trans, who's gay. You know, I, I there's great people in all communities. And then there's usually always going to be like that small percentage that's like just dicks and make everybody look like assholes. But once you put it on social media, it gets amplified and it gets controversial and it just really brings out a lot of ugliness in people. And it'll make me feel the way sometimes toward a group of people when I'm like, well, it, it might not even be like that in real life. It's just social media and the hypocrisy and the crazy shit. Because I've yet to hear anybody call anybody a vim. I live in the South, too, though, so I don't know if they're going to be doing all that shit down here. But, you know, I have never heard that until social media. And I'm like, is this a fucking joke? But it's not. Right. It's, it's it's real. Yeah, I didn't think it was a real thing either. But then, like I said, I they have were friends dead ass teach. serious. Yeah, I have friends who teach and they're told in the school system they have to call these kids they them if that's what they want to be identified as. And like I said, you know, the whole situation to me has just gotten so convoluted. So at what point, you know, are they going to eventually make it where people can just identify as whatever they want? You know, if somebody can be a V them which is, I mean, first of all, just pronouncing it is weird. It's not even spelled grammatically correct. Yeah. But if they can be <laughs> that and we have to take them seriously, at what point can I decide I want to be a white woman and I want all the benefits that come with white privilege? You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, right. I mean, just keeping right. it real. Like, when do we get that option to just pick whatever race we want to be? You yeah, know, no. so that we don't get judged as harshly when we apply for loans. Exactly. You know? so. Shit, I want them low interest rates too. You know, <laughs> I, feel, I feel you. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers, to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.